evening, Jordan Bego. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT. And it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 to 9, where we talk something relevant in sport and trying to bagel. Uh, on tonight's program, we're going to be talking to a couple of members of Pratt Sports Martial Arts Association of Trent Tobago. They recently returned home with a couple of medals uh, taking part in the 10th Pan American Kickboxing Championship that was held in Mexico. Uh, I have with me the coach and three members of that uh, successful team here with us tonight. Uh, let me introduce first of all Junior Kesto, the coach. Welcome, coach. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Pleasure to be and then we have, on my left here, we have Noah Sorello, uh, the bronze medal winner. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome again. It's a pleasure. I have uh, Karel Kwamina, uh, two goals, one bronze. Yes. Welcome to ACTN. And Shakira Sandy, one silver and one goal. Again, welcome and congratulations on your achievement. Thank you. Let me start with you, Coach Junior. Tell us a bit about this whole... Um, edition here because I know that this is not the first time it's the second time that you all went you were in a smaller group this year and you all came back with more medals so tell me a bit about the whole experience well um, this is our second time going to the 10th Pan American Kickboxing Championship which was held in Cancun Mexico uh, we started preparing for this tournament exactly after 2016 okay that was the last event we took part in so from 2017, preparations were made for this tournament with the team. And um, unfortunately, we didn't have much athletes competing. We took four because of lack of funding and stuff. Mm. What was the number of athletes that went to the first one? The first event, we had nine athletes. Okay. Right, this mm. time we were able to take four, and we did pretty good. We came away with eight medals because the competition was tough. It was the Pan American region, so there are about approximately about 21 countries in this region, and uh, 16 of the countries were present. Okay. So it was very intense, you know. Mm. And I'm almost certain that we're looking forward to the 2020 competition. Mm -hmm. But when you look, you, were you the coach for the first edition when you went? Yes, I was. When you look back at the first edition to this second edition, um, how much of an improvement have you seen you know, with the four athletes that you took? Right. The, the, the first division that we took part in in 2016, only one athlete, Corel, was there. And um, from then till now, there have been vast improvements in the team. Mm -hmm. But also, remember, it's something that's evolving. Yeah. So the tournament that we took part in 2016, the competition was high. The standard was high. In 2018 this year, it went up a notch again. Mm -hmm. So it was, the competition was fierce, it was intense, and every country that came to that event, the athletes came to win. Okay. Everybody came to win. Okay. You could have seen it, the passion, the drive, the commitment of the coaches, the athletes, it was pretty intense. Okay. So we have to go back to the drawing board again and shape over things, you know what I mean? Do our homework and but stuff. But when you look at the performance of the local team here, mm. and you compare it with the other teams, mm. what area do you see that you have your work cut out? Um, well, we have do? our work cut out. Technically, we have one or two stuff to um, add on, mm -hmm. as well as the, 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 the areas are uh, general conditioning, strength and conditioning. And, and the technical aspect. These are two of the areas that we we, we, we working on. Mm -hmm. um, we already have programs in place for that and stuff. So it's just a matter of implementation, get them to go through the paces and stuff like that so they could be on okay. that same page and that level. Okay. You know? well, let me talk to Shakira. Um, this is your first major tournament, right? How was the experience? What was it feeling like going into... I know you're all excited when you got, got um, called up to go and represent Trent Tobago, but what was it feeling like when you actually reached there and you have to walk out, you know, to take part? Butterflies? Scared? Well, I was really frightened, scared, because yeah. my first time going to an international tournament in front of all these people mm -hmm. to fight and things, so yeah, I was really scared, frightened. Mm -hmm. but. Afterwards, when I went to fight, block out everything, and I was good after that. So, in the first event, you got the silver or the gold? The first event, I got the silver. You got the silver? Yeah. Right? 
What did that do for you now? Did it inspire you more to get in now? That's the reason why you got the gold? Yeah, when I got the silver, I didn't really, I, didn't, I wasn't really, um, what to say, I, I was, it was normal, but you wanted yeah, to do better. Yeah, but I wanted the goal really bad, yeah. so yeah, it inspired me to get the goal after. Yeah. But um, what got you involved in the martial arts? It's kickboxing, right? Yeah. What, how you got involved in kickboxing? Well, I was just like going to school and thing, and I just normal. I just um, um, I just like went to karate class, normal training. Mm. Cause now start was a white belt, and now start to train and stuff, and then. As we continue going along, I end up going to competition, small mm -hmm. competition in Trinidad, and then my points keep on adding up, and that's how I got onto the team and start mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. international competition. And it was your first major yeah. going abroad, you know? Yeah. Um, what have you, from the whole experience, right, what have you take from that that you will be implementing into the sport now to create you or to make you to be a better, a better um, competitor? Well, training, mm. keep on training, and not give up because it's a long way we went, so mm -hmm. not to give up and keep on training. Right. Karel, this is your second time, right? The first time you won a medal. Yeah. You come now and you double up two goals and one silver. How was the experience for you second time around? For me, this experience was actually much better than the first time, seeing that the competition was more intense mm -hmm. and more technical. Mm -hmm. So it shows where I have to now go back to the drawing board and, you know, add on to my arsenal for like, the other competitions because it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. So I really would take this experience as a learning experience, you know, mm -hmm. be better at the competitions in the future, hopefully then. What would you say is your strong points and your weak points? I would say my strong points basically would be anything to do with kicking, but mm -hmm. my weak points right now would mm -hmm. be conditioning. Mm -hmm. So that I'd have to look into and build on that as the time goes mm -hmm. by. And how you got into, into involved in the sport? Well, basically, I had a passion since I was small to do it, but mm. my mom didn't send me until I went into high school mm. because they had like an after school program where you could do karate and stuff. And mm. from there, it was basically recreational, and then we gradually moved by mm. into competitive martial arts, and that's how I eventually ended up on the team. Okay. So I have a good record competing so far, and I would mm. like to maintain the record. Okay. Noah? First time abroad? Yes. Tell me your experience. It was a tough experience seeing all the countries, yeah. all the different countries so and all the people you were frightened? A little. Yeah. When, I, I, it's, 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 it's normal that when you go into something for the first time, mm -hmm. you wouldn't call it fright, you may, maybe you call it you know, anxiety or something like that, yeah. right? But nice. as you get in to the arena, and you know that you're going to start, that have to get out, come, yes. that fear or whatever, it has to, have to be removed because commission start. What was the commission like for you, you know, first time, you know, with all these people around, or, you know, how, how you got over that hurdle of getting out, getting the, the fright or the butterflies out there? Well, before I fight, it had plenty of people surround me. Oh. When I went in the ring, mm -hmm. I just forget everything and I, I do my best. Yeah. How long have you been in this sport? About five years. Mm, uh, why you got into this sport? One of my friends told me about it. Mm. And from there, I just started to Okay. Coach, tell me a bit about, and try, let's try to educate the public, because we, we use the word martial arts, mm. and then we use the word kickboxing. Mm -hmm. right? There's a difference, mm -hmm. right? You have karate, you have kickboxing. Mm -hmm. The sport that they are into right now mm -hmm. is actually kickboxing. Okay, let me clarify that. I yeah. Am, uh, as you mentioned, you mentioned martial arts and you mentioned kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Kickboxing is a part of martial arts. Right. Martial arts is the general name for all the fighting arts, okay. right? But what we partake in is from the International Federation, which is WACO World Association Kickboxing Organization. Mm -hmm. That is the International Federation. There are two divisions. There are tatami, which are mat events, mm -hmm. and there are ring events. Mm -hmm. We take part in the tatami events. Mm -hmm. The tatami includes point fighting, light contact, kick light, mm -hmm. 
mm. and musical forms. Okay. So these athletes that we have here, they took part in point fighting and light contact, mm. as well as musical forms. Okay. All right. So these are just the the ideas of what, what we do. So that is the breakdown of the competition and the events that we take part in. Okay. Well, I, I know you're not going to wait for 2020, no. like some other sports, two months before, three months oh, before no. to start. Have you already implemented a program where you're going to be putting them through along with others? Because, I mean, yes. you, at least you know, you're not going to want to go back with mm -hmm. four again, yep. right? So tell me a bit about the training regime, the, the schedule. What is it like from now until 2020 for these three right. athletes here? and right. for whoever you know will, will make the team right the the training schedule starts back we since we came back from the last tournament uh, we just had two weeks break trainers resumes on saturday coming mm. for all the, the national team members and there's a strict regime of strength and conditioning flexibility the technical aspects of the sports and very of course the sparring and stuff like that so the program has been done out already, so for the next couple weeks, mm -hmm. they will be engaged in the program to improve the skill level, the fitness and stuff like that, because our next assignment would be sometime in May mm -hmm. next year. Okay. So we're preparing for that. That, that, is what, that is what tournament? That is the Argentine Open. Okay, that's in Argentina? It's in Argentina, okay. Cyrus. So we'll be preparing for that, and mm -hmm. then from there we go to there's yeah, supposed to be a CAC championship open, mm. uh, which is a Central American and Caribbean championship. And then from there, there's supposed to be a tournament in Venezuela okay. that we'll be attending to. So we have our work cut out for next year, and preparation starts from Saturday coming okay. for that. What about local tournaments, you know? Because, you know, you, you can be training, 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 yes, but yes. you need to see that training right. into well, in what happened in the past was well, there were a lot of local tournaments. There was a circuit, and mm -hmm. the circuit had tournaments almost basically every month. Mm -hmm. And um, this year, 2018, there were not a lot of tournaments. There have been about three or four local tournaments, mm -hmm. which were hosted by the association, which is PCAT Sports Martial Arts Association. Mm -hmm. It was hosted by them, and then again, because of the lack of funding, mm -hmm. well, we know that's a, that's big issue. funding, yeah. right? Yeah. The tournaments had to be cut mm -hmm. so i'm not too sure there will be any tournaments for the rest of the year hopefully next year there may be a one or two before we go to uh, argentina okay okay when you look back now what are the areas of concern with the organization or the sport in general because as you said um sponsors and then you, you had to carry three because you couldn't get the funding to carry more mm -hmm. um where, what are the areas of your concern? Is there concern, you know? Yeah. Um, where funding is... is, is, is that is, is a um, major problem, funding, because without money, nothing is possible. Um, just to travel alone, accommodations and stuff like that. And if the Ministry of Sports doesn't have the funding, then it's left for us to do fundraisers and stuff like that. And it, was it, was the even, ministry um, able to help you all for this, um, this this last tournament? Well, yes, they were able to lend some assistance. Mm -hmm. um, it, it went a long way, but um, again, much more is needed than that, you know, because mm -hmm. if we are to have these athletes in tip-top shape, we need to have local competitions mm -hmm. so that they could um, try out their skill, make sure they fine-tune, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they'll be on the spot, but the problem is lack of competition. And then we have our next issue with support. Mm. By I was, was going to ask you that um, as one of the quickly questions. Is the sport of kickboxing more so, is it well supported by, 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 by Trent Bago? Or is it a sport that is there and just needing that, needing that, that, that breakthrough to, to get to the forefront? Well, you see, Sport martial arts as a whole, the people that support are basically the, the, these, these athletes, the kids, the, the parents, mm -hmm. the friends. Mm -hmm. It is not a sport as 
compared to like MMA, mm -hmm. where people actually pay to see like. Yeah, but what can be done in an effort to try to get it more out? Well, I think it, um, what could be done too is the a lot has to be done with the Ministry of Sports in order to to make it more visible mm -hmm. by supporting and stuff like that and and that's the basic thing support from the ministry of sport to make it more visible mm -hmm. so that everybody could say hey this is actually a, a sporting event that hey, mm -hmm. makes sense you know what i mean we could come and support it and stuff because if you do a survey and look at the amount of schools martial arts schools anywhere you go in this country yeah. there are martial arts schools mm -hmm. any town any district there are martial arts schools yeah so then why is it not popular yeah. why is it not followed by people yeah right mm -hmm. Ministry has to do the homework and do the proper advertising and support the events to make And it's young people too. Exactly. Yes, and Exactly. Yeah. What about trying to get the sport into schools? Have you all, you know, looked at, at that area? Yes, yes, we are, there are school programs in okay. a lot of schools that um, have after school programs where we actually run one right now in two, two schools, but then the problem is manpower, resources, okay. yeah. right? And then if you're doing that at school time, you have to be committed as a full-time instructor. Yeah. And then we don't have much full-time instructors because mm. it's, it's a part-time stuff, you know? Okay. So that's one of the challenges that we have. Mm. You know? So your pool of athletes right now will comprise of how many, you would say? Um, it's not much. It's basically, it's about 75 to 100, okay. which is the pool to choose from. but. Again, it's a small number. If you look back and see how many schools exist, then you'll, there's a large pool. Mm. But then they are not around so that they cannot be chosen because they're not making themselves available to mm. be selected. Mm -hmm. So we have that problem as well too, you know. So um, in terms of the other countries, it's, it's, it's a numbers game because they, when you look at countries like Mexico and Argentina, and they feel it, over 100 athletes. Yeah. We have four. Yeah. And still coming out with and eight still coming medals, out with eight. you know. So we think, have the talent. Yeah, just think if you had more than that. that exactly. That, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. the talent, you know. It's mm -hmm. just that everybody, most people are in a different mindset, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge. Sh Shikira, what would you like to accomplish in the sport? Mm. You know, and go to more international tournaments, win more medals for my country, and yeah. Mm. Um, if I'm to ask you, what, so far, I guess this tournament winning the gold and the silver will be your greatest achievement thus far. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, how would you, will, how are you going to go about using these medals? to bring you to a point where you can safely say I'm on the road to the Olympics? Well, I could safely say that I fought for my medals and mm. yeah, it's... <laughs> I know, I know, I understand. Um, Karel, you seem to be the one who was leading the way because you was there the first one, you yeah. won medals. You went to the second one. You, you, you double up. What's in store for you? What what goal have you set for yourself in the sport? Well, after I finish competing, I would like to be a coach and also a physiotherapist. So okay. That way, I could be able to groom athletes as well to be in the same road that mm -hmm. I was in the competitive line of kickboxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Noah, I'm coming back to you now. <laughs> When you got into the sport, right, did you get into the sport to take it seriously or you just went into the sports maybe saying, let me see how it go? Before oh. I never used to take it seriously. When you decided to take it serious? When I used to, when I didn't, when I get picked for the national team. Okay, so what was that moment when, you, when they called you for the national team, what was that like? Tell me the feeling. It was a, a good feeling, an excited mm. feeling. Mm. What school you go to attend? Go to secondary. Okay, and you? I'm in school right now. Okay, and? 
They go Martin Sancho okay. secondary. How do you, your, your peers at school look up to you? Because I mean, regardless of what, you all are representing Trent and Tobago. That's the, that's the, 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 the top of the thing. You all are representing Trent and Tobago. How your peers at school, you know, look at you all when you all come back, you know? Because I know you must have gone to the school with your two medals to, to show off, you know? Mm. Right? How, how's, how's that feeling like? Well, they're like, all that training, I can't do all that training. And because, you know, yeah. every day, every weekend, you know, we have training and stuff. Yeah. They are like, I think I could do all that training, you know? But then there's like you going different places, you know, mm. get, making yourself. You know, out there and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think they will join, but mm -hmm. they will look up to you. Like, okay. that good yeah. person. Coach, you are a proud man, you know, with, with, with your bunch of your people here. Yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm satisfied with your performance, but yeah. we have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. because I expect greater things from each one of these athletes mm -hmm. and the rest of the team in the future. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at the, that Argentina and Peru mm -hmm. and all those different countries that were, were, were there, um, and you look at, um, mm -hmm. at, at your um, guys and girls here, you know, what does that do for you in the sense of, you know, wanting to get them to that, to that of the ladder. Yeah, it, it is a passion that I have because I never had the opportunity. So I want to give these at least the opportunity. So you never so got, got the opportunity to travel and to take part in? I got the opportunity to travel, mm -hmm. but to take part in true world championships, never. To represent the country officially, mm -hmm. never had the opportunity. They have the opportunity now. It's my duty as the coach to push them towards that, mm -hmm. to bring out the best in them mm -hmm. so that they can represent at a high level and be proud. It feels good to know that we could stand to to do with these guys from these countries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. skill level, mm -hmm. and, and perform like this. It says that we, we in the country doing something right. We just need to work a little harder to push a little more to get to mm -hmm. that higher level. Which were some of the toughest battles they had to undergo, you know, in order to achieve the medals? Well, all the battles were tough. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could capture it for you. The minute they step into the ring, it's like you're looking at a football game. Mm -hmm. You hear the crowd chanting because you it's the Mexican section here, the, 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 the Puerto Rican section here, the, 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 the Argentine section here, and everybody, the Chile section here, and everybody making noise for the athlete. Except Trinidad and Tobago. Well, we had few numbers. We were balling. <laughs> the supporters were making a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah. You had supporters with you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had supporters. A couple okay, that's, of parents went and stuff yeah. like that. But it, the, the passion and the drive that these individuals have mm. to win, because everybody came to win. So we mm. had to step our game up. And have, we did. Have you, um, you all had the opportunity to go back to the ministry to at least show them what you all have, um, what, what you all achieved? Oh yes, well that hasn't happened as yet, but it would. I think shortly we would have a meeting with them and audience with them. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Well, let, 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 let's hope they see the positive side of, of, of it and um, maybe uh -huh. 2020. Yeah. Uh, we should have a lot of money by that time because that is, that is, yes. that, yeah, we'll have more time. That is closer to election, so we got money that oh, time. Yes, yes. And uh, we hope that you can carry a bigger, um, yes, a bigger um, team outside there. Um, we don't have much time remaining. Um, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to share with Trent Bego, you know, or anything you'd like to tell your, 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 your team members here, you know? Well, um, but for, for the team members, not just here, those back who outside who looking on as well. Guys, hard work always pays off. And hard work be talent all the time. So just continue to work hard. I'll be there to support you guys, work hard. To the other martial artists outside there, this is an opportunity for everybody to get on board, you know what I mean? and to represent the country at the highest level. Okay. Uh, Shakira, any closing comments? Anything you'd like to say hi to? You have 30 seconds. I want to say hi to my sister, Sharika, my mommy, and my daddy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Girl? <laughs> I would basically like to um, say thank you to my coach, my personal coach uh, at Fitness Unlimited Learning Center. Okay. And You're really taking this thing serious? Yeah, your own personal coach, okay. <laughs> And to all the other athletes out there, remain disciplined and determined, yeah. and one day you will reach that goal that you set out. Yeah, Noah. I want to say thank you to my parents for supporting me and my brothers and sisters. Okay. 
Well, on behalf of myself at ACTM, we want to say a special congratulations to you all because, as I said, once you represent Trinidad and Tobago and you come over with a medal, you have done yourself proud and you have done the country proud. So just keep on um, training hard, keep focused, and martial arts are disciplined sports. So I can't tell you to be more disciplined because if it wasn't disciplined, all of you would be sitting down here with no medals. Right. So again, congratulations and all the best. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, you have come to the end of the first part of our scoreboard here at ACT, and we were talking to members of the Pratt Sports Martial Arts Association of Trent Tobago. The athletes seated here with me, they came back very successful with eight medals. Um, a small group, but we wish them all the best, and we know that come 2020, they will achieve a lot more. Coach Junior, you, uh, you've been doing a fi fantastic job. Uh, stay focused with them. Is young people. We have a lot of issues with young people right now in society, but we know that with proper guidance and discipline, they'll go the right way. So again, thank you all very much for coming down and spending this time with us. Thank you. Father. But viewers, we're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to be talking to Denise Didier, the head coach of the Beach Football, Football Academy Development Program. It's a program that is being done in Beach, and a lot of good things happen in rural communities. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after the short break. We, from those encounters together, and this was a North-South game to open the season. So the team might be playing well, as we already, always say with Trinidad and Tobago. Futsal, did that great for me. Okay, hey everybody. Welcome to another edition of Field of Dreams and ACTN. My name is Steve David. I'm your host. Welcome to another edition of Scoreboard here on ACT and it's always a pleasure to be in your company every Tuesday evening between the hours of 8 and 9.